There's something about fishing that stirs up an energy and excitement from deep within us. It could come from landing a personal best fish or by helping someone land their first fish ever. It's stories shared around the dinner table and after a day on the water, the goal of learning more about the wonders that surround us. To us, it's the things that give our lives purpose and meaning. These are the stories told by the avid, the dedicated, and the passionate. This is the Love of Fishing Podcast. The Love of Fishing Podcast is proudly powered by Peter's Tackle. And sponsored by Freedom Tackle, Silver Salmon, Dreamweaver, Team Underdog Cutbait, and Grimsby Tackle. Hey everybody and welcome to the Love of Fishing Podcast. I'm your host Lyle Gator and today I'm bringing you a special for the fall season. Today we're going to be talking about staging kings. It's been a while since I've released a podcast and I thought since it's August 1st it might be a good time to share some tips on how you can find and catch more staging king salmon. Stay tuned, we've got a great episode ahead. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're new to the show, we've got lots of episodes from this past year and the year before. Before we get into the Salmon Talk, I'd like to thank the sponsors of this year's show. First and foremost goes out to our title sponsor, Peter's Tackle. Thank you, Ange, at the store. Great store if you're in the Niagara area. If you're from Niagara, I'm sure you know that Peter's Tackle is the place to go. We've also got Freedom Tackle helping us out, Grimsby Tackle, Team Underdog Cutbait, the Silver Salmon Challenge, and Team Dreamweaver, helping round out a great roster of sponsors that I am proud to work with. Thank you to everybody who supported the show by subscribing to the channel. If you're listening on YouTube right now, don't forget that we are also on Spotify, so you can take the show wherever you go. And if you have a topic that you'd like me to talk about or explore through a podcast, I'm always open to suggestions. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to hear more about. With all that out of the way... Let's get talking about staging kings. I wanted to do this because it's the start of August and in a couple weeks, staging kings are going to start to show up all around the lake. Um, Whether you're on Lake Ontario, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, this middle of August through middle of September period is really when staging kings are popping off. And I wanted to do a quick podcast on this because staging kings are hard fish to catch. Once you kind of figure them out and you figure out What makes them tick? They're a lot of fun, but especially for anglers that are new to fishing at this time of year or maybe new to salmon fishing, it can be a challenging time. So I want to help uh, shorten your learning curve because the fall season is short, but it's one of the best times that you can catch the biggest salmon uh, of the season or of your angling career I guess um, because they're all mature fish that you're targeting they're all at the maximum size and this is a really great time to get out with a small boat as well because the fish are coming closer to shore as they go to run up rivers. I like to think of staging kings as a completely different species than king salmon at any other time of year. They're truly changing by the minute. These fish are no longer interested in eating. They will eat but they're not searching out food like they are the rest of the year. You know, if you contrast a spring king, which is so reliant on bait, it's, you know, chasing those bait balls uh, anywhere through the water column to then in the fall when their primary job is to find the river that they want to run up. Their behavior is very different. Their physiology is very different. They're a completely different fish. So I want to talk about three different topics in the podcast, I want to talk about what are stagers. So considering the weather, the wind, the fall season, when is stager season? We're also going to talk about where to find them. So locating fish and of course, how to catch them. So these three things I think are key to understanding king salmon in the staging period. And if you can get a handle on this and it's going to take time, you know, you you won't be able to listen to this podcast and immediately just be smashing them all the time, but it'll give you enough um, that you can start building on because they're complicated. It's it's like any fish any time of year. You know, there's so much to know about them, and I don't know everything about them. I don't think anyone does, 
And one of the really cool things about Great Lakes fishing is that these salmon are, are transplants. They're from out west. Um, there is a specific strain of fish that were taken from the west coast of, of Canada and brought to our Great Lakes. And now over time, since their introduction, their genetics have changed. And this is something that on the fishery side of things, we're really interested in. And there's a lot of research going into uh, trying to figure out what's happening with these fish. Are they adapting? How fast are they adapting? Are they basically like a sub uh, gene pool that, that's so different than any other gene pool of salmon, uh, you know, that they have distinct characteristics with their migrations, their spawning periods, all this stuff. So there's a lot of unknowns even that, that change by the year for our Great Lakes fish. So they're just so incredible. And this time of year, um, you know, to chase staging king salmon is, is just so much fun. So we're going to start with what are stagers. And I, I briefly mentioned this. These are fish that are going to spawn. So we call them stagers because they're staging in front of river and harbor mouths, uh, waiting for the opportune time to run up river and try to reproduce. I say try because they don't always succeed. In the western end of Lake Ontario where I'm at, we have a lot of dams, we have a lot of man-made structure that really isn't ideal for successful reproduction. And this is all managed. I sort of get upset when I hear people say, oh, well, you know, we don't get enough uh, stocks or, you know, this or that. And and I don't think people really understand that, that this is all accounted for. And, you know, there's always... There's always room for improvement. I'm not saying that, that everything's perfect how it is right now, but, you know, the western end receives a lot more stocking than the eastern end of the lake, and that's because we don't have natural reproduction happening. So I'll leave that aside. But basically, staging king salmon, looking to go upriver and spawn, weather, wind, and the fall season, you know, we're talking about that middle of August through middle of September, and there's a phenomenon that, is very interesting here and it's called photo period and photo period is essentially understanding what makes each day a day from sun up to sundown is the time that the sun comes up and the sun goes down and this is photo period and all fish they behave based on they, they, they receive cues from the sun and and basically the timing of when king salmon spawn they have something built into them that tells them I need to run or be close to running at this time. It's ingrained. Same with how a lot of people believe that fish honed to their natal waters. It's the same thing. The timing that that fish will show up and be ready to go is all pre-calculated. And, and I, I don't know all the answers behind this, but I know that it exists. I think there's a lot of research that can be done to find out what's going on. You know, why does the gani get a run of fish so much earlier than, let's say, here in Niagara? Could be water temperature. I think it's photo period because we've had hot days on the North Shore where the water's still warm and those fish go. So photo period, very important. Understanding the weather and the wind. So wind will push water around. It'll move warm water, it'll move cold water. Rain is another big thing. So typically when we get a big rain, if we get a big rain middle of August, you're going to see fish start to show up near the plumes of the rivers that have dumped out a bunch of dirty water from the rain and the runoff. And this is the biggest, most tangible cue for us as anglers to understand when stagers will show up. Like I said, photo period, there's definitely something going on there, but rain, very tangible, very easy to see. So let's say August 15th, we get a big rain. You can probably bet that there's going to be fish starting to show up in shallow because they're hunting for that water of the creeks or wherever they think they're going to go up to go up and spawn. So this is what I would define as stager season when those fish have now become interested more in spawning than in eating. Something that you'll also see during this time is fish porpoising or jumping. If they're jumping, my belief is that they're breaking up their eggs and sperm 
they're slapping the side of their bodies on the surface of the water to jar all of that stuff that's in their body. But porpoising fish look like fish that are just coming up and sipping the surface of the water. And the best explanation that I've ever had for that, actually uh, Moby Nick told me, he said, I think that that's from fish uh, in the salt water when they're out in the ocean and there's a river dumping in, the fresh water will sit on top of the salt water. So that's actually the salmon coming up and trying to find fresh water. Now, of course, in the Great Lakes, we don't have any salt water. But it's one of those behaviors that over time has you know, been necessary for these fish to survive. So when they're then introduced to the Great Lakes, they're going to keep doing it because it's just part of their nature. So if you see porpoising fish, most likely that's fish looking for spawning water. We'll say spawning water instead of fresh water. It's a behavior that helps you locate fish very easily, um, but it's also indicative of, of staging fish that are now in staging mode. So now that we know a bit about what stagers are, let's talk about where to find them. So I previously mentioned creek mouths, harbor, uh, mouths, anywhere that new water is dumping into the lake, anywhere that, you know, in October you're going to see fish running up creeks. Think a few months earlier, those fish are in the lake, they're waiting to go up. Um, so here on the western end, you know, areas like Bronte, Hamilton Harbor, uh, Jordan, Port Dalhousie, the Niagara River, off the Niagara Bar, these are all really good spots to find staging fish. Getting a bit more into detail, uh, you know, every port is going to have a couple of very important lines, contour lines, where fish set up. So because the lake is so different on the North Shore and the South Shore, I might be looking for something different every year than the guys on the North Shore are. Typically the fish on the North Shore will go closer to the piers or to the river mouths than they will on the South Shore. And that's because there's deeper water closer to shore on the North Shore than there is down in my end. So let's say you're fishing out of Niagara and you're fishing off the Niagara Bar. You know, that Niagara Bar is, is huge. It's a huge flat and the fish will sit off the ledge before they make their way up onto the bar and then eventually up the river. So, you know, I, I can't say, oh, it's always going to be in 50 feet of water that they stage because... You know, at the same time that we have fish sitting in 50 feet off Port Dalhousie, we might have stagers sitting in 180 feet off the river. So there's key sweet spots there that fish really like to sit. And it, it all has to do with them making their way in from deep water, finding a zone that they have comfortable temperature. And, and temperature is one of those weird things at this time because I don't believe it's that important to where the fish are. I think it's very important with what fish are catchable. You know, if I have the option of fishing for fish that are in 70 degree water from top to bottom, or water that, that's nice and stratified, you know, I might have 70 on top, but I have 50 on the bottom, I'm definitely going to take that water that's colder where those fish are, because those fish are going to be more catchable, they're going to bite better. But that doesn't mean that you won't see fish in 75 degree water right next to the piers. It's just as an angler, you have to decide which fish are most catchable. So typically this time of year, we've got some runoff. I'm looking for dirty water for those fish that are really locked into spawning or going up river. This is typically that pea green to brown muddy water. And I mentioned about temp. You know, I'm, I'm looking for that as cool a water as I can find closest to shore where I know those fish are. So now that we know what stagers are and we know where to find them, there's a few rigs that I want to talk about uh, that will help you catch them. And understanding these fish is, is almost a completely different species than, uh, you know, at other times of the year. These fish are aggressive, but they are not feeding. So using things like the Dreamweaver Spin Doctor, very good bait uh, to attract and you know aggress these fish. Spin doctors are nice because they have a really tight roll and I think that that in combination with meat or with flies really triggers an aggression bite. 
And, uh, you know, I mentioned meat. Meat is another great thing. It has that scent and just that natural appeal uh, that, that seals the deal on these fish that can sometimes be hard to get to go. And I'm lucky to work with Team Underdog on the podcast and also with Shane at Dreamweaver. And, you know, these guys just make a great product. You'll see them in the stores. Um, they're top of the top of the line stuff. Uh, if you're getting into salmon fishing, I can't say enough good things about the 10 inch spin doctor for staging Kings, you know, a little bit bigger spin doctor, really aggressive action. And also Mike's, uh, underdog cut bait, you know, really great baits, always perfect cut, always fit in the head perfectly and roll perfectly. So that's just a little aside whites, green dots, um, a lot of silver flash, chartreuse flash when the sun comes up uh, to really kick that light and excite those fish. You know, your, your standard standard meathead rigs, Twinkie rigs, they're all going to go. Um, it's, it's mostly about finding that good water and about finding fish that are in a good temp that will bite. Um, you know, if you have a fish hawk or a sub troll or whatever, really use that this time of year. I, um, I really am a big believer in that. So those are a couple ways that you can catch them. You can catch them on spoons too. Um, I find early in the morning fish are a little bit more, you know, eager to bite spoons and then throughout the day, a nice slow troll with, uh, with something big and, and flashy, uh, will probably get your, your bites. Um, you know, these fish again, spoons mim- mimic a, a bait fish. These fish aren't really interested in eating. So big things that piss them off, that's the way to go. If you're new to fishing and you have a small boat, let's say, you know, a 14 footer, that's fine. If I could fish two rods, I'd be totally content fishing dipsies. And I would troll one with a big 11 inch paddle uh, with a meat head behind it. And the other would be a 10 inch spin doctor with a Twinkie rig. You know, if you're new to fishing, uh, for, for kings, this is a great time to get your feet wet, great time to explore what catching a salmon is all about, and I guarantee once you hook your first king and it screams off a bunch of line, you are going to be hooked on salmon fishing. I'm going to tell a quick story about the first time that I really learned that these fish were so different uh, than, you know, just a few weeks before. I was out with my with my grandfather, and we uh, were trolling around Port Dalhousie. I think it was 50 feet of water last weekend in August, and obviously I knew there was a lot of staging kings around. And I just remember this beautiful night. It was awesome, really perfect temperature, no wind, tons of boats around, and we were all around these guys that were hooked up nonstop, and we could see the fish jumping, and we could see them porpoising. And you just got the feeling that things were happening. It was on. But we trolled and we trolled and we trolled. And at that point, this was the first year that he had moved back from up north and fishing Lake Huron, where we never really fished stagers. We, we fished for fish in August, but now looking back, most of those fish were two-year-olds. They weren't the fish that were going to come in and spawn. So we always used spoons. We never used flashers, meat, none of that stuff. So we're out there, we're trolling spoons. I got lead core out. I got riggers out, tried some dipsies, nothing, man. And these guys are hooked up everywhere. And I just remember just being like so deflated, like, man, like I really didn't pick the right color here. Like we tried, we tried this, we tried that. And then I, I got thinking and I got looking and I talked to some guys and everyone said, oh yeah, I was on, you know, flash or fly, flash or meat, this and that. And that's when I realized, okay, these fish are not eating. A spoon looks like a bait fish. That's great most times of the year. But when you're talking those fish that are locked into spawning and they're in a completely different stage, that's when you got to break out the stuff that makes noise and is aggressive. I hope that this podcast helps you if you're on the search for some staging kings. I hope that it helps shorten your learning curve and puts a few nice ones in the box for you this fall. Guys, thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Love of Fishing podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more podcasts and videos. We're up over 900 subs, which I can't, 
I just can't even believe. Um, but obviously you guys are enjoying and that's fantastic. Do yourself a favor. If you have a chance this summer, take a kid fishing, be good to each other and get outside and go fishing. Peace.